working with PicoScope 7 reference waveforms. One of my followers has asked about PicoScope 7 and reference files, so I thought it's time to make a video. So if you look on my screen, you'll see that I'm using version 7.1.23.18325. On the screen, I am capturing an injector waveform that's coming from a waveform simulator. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to turn this into a reference file. So over on my left hand menu, if you don't have reference forms already on this menu, you can click on the more and then you can do reference waveforms here. To save this waveform as a waveform reference file, choose the channel that is showing the waveform that you want to capture. Then you can go ahead and give it a name. So in this case, I'm going to name it Injector Simulator. I like to give it a color, something that's not natural to Pico. So this purple is a nice color that helps make it stick out. Then you can go ahead and click Save. This will open up a window to where you can save your reference files. I recommend you have a separate folder just for reference files. Here, we need to name this again. So we're going to name this Injector Simulator. And click Save. Now, that has already been preloaded over on the right. You can see that here in that purple color. And that waveform is already loaded. However, if you don't want that loaded, or you want to know how to load it later, back over to Reference Waveforms. And to remove that, just click Remove. Now you'll notice that it's gone off to the right here. To bring that back, you simply go to File, make sure you navigate it to the right reference area, and here is Injector Simulator reference file. Go ahead and hit Open, and you don't see it because it's laying right on top of my waveform. This is where your offsets can come in handy. If you want to do your vertical offset, you can move this up or down, for your reference comparison, and your delay will give you a left and right movement of this waveform. Now, one of the things that might happen is that you might actually be sampling on a different voltage scale. Back over to the channel, if I am on a 100 volts as I'm making my sample, and then I go ahead and I load my reference waveform, and let's come over and grab this one. You'll notice that they do look different, and that might throw you off when you're taking a look to see if this is comparable or not. What you have to make sure is to look at the maximum voltage on your reference waveform, which is 50 volts, and then look at the maximum voltage on what you're sampling, which is 100 volts. If you go back over to your channel, you change this to 50 volts, now you have waveforms that are identical that you can compare to. So how do you take a saved file and turn it into a reference file? Well, the first thing you have to do is go ahead and click the Open, so you can open that saved file. And here's the last one I just did. It's a simulator of a TPS, and this is from my waveform simulator. So let's go ahead and open that file, and there's my file. Now we can go over to my reference waveforms, and it's as simple as choosing this file, which is this one right here. And go ahead, and we want to save it like we saved the last one. So I'm going to name this as TPS. Simulator, and again, I prefer colors that are not default channel colors, so I like the purple because it sticks out. And I'm simply going to hit Save, and once again, I'm going to name this as my TPS Simulator, and there it sets, and hit Save. So that's already preloaded now, and if I wanted to see that, I could simply move one of these delays over. Also note, if you want to adjust these vertical offsets or these delays, you can use the pluses or minuses, but you can also click right in the center, and then you can type in a value like 20%. Or you want to go back to zero, you can just take and zero that out. Or you can come back over here if you don't like 100 milliseconds offset, and you want something more like a 200 milliseconds offset, you can do it that way. So let's go ahead and remove this waveform and then let's go back over and show you how you can load that again, back to Reference Waveform, up over to File, go ahead and select the waveform you want to load, click OK, and again, it might be right on top, 
So you may have to do an offset so that you can see that waveform. And by any chance that you're looking at this waveform on a different voltage scale, you may have to change your voltage scale. So if I came over here and had this on 20 volts right here, well, that's gonna look a lot different, even though if we came and measured that maximum voltage, that's 5.332. I came down here and measured that maximum voltage, that's 5.343. So depending on how close I make my measurements, you can see that it's the same voltage value. Let's take a look at a situation where we have a crank in red on the bottom and a cam signal on top in blue. And let's see how we can do reference files for both of these so we can use this as comparison. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to Reference Waveforms. And I'm first gonna do my cam sensor, so I'm gonna click on Channel A. I'm gonna change the name to Cam Simulator. I'm gonna change the color to one of these purple colors. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And once again, I have to change the name to Cam Simulator. And I'm going to hit save. And that's going to preload it over here on the left. Now I'm going to come over to the B channel. So up under manage, I'm going to click on the B2 right here. I'm going to go ahead and name this my crank simulator. I'm going to change the color to one of these orange colors. It's going to record the offset. If you don't want that, you can change that. But I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. And name this Crank Simulator. It's not the best crank signal I've seen, but it's what I've got to work with. Now we've got the orange crank loaded over here on my right. And if I lower that down, we can see that crank simulator. And I have the purple cam simulator loaded over here on my left. And so now we can separate this for our comparison. Additionally, if I wanna reload these, let's go ahead and remove both of these. And let's go ahead and play Start recording, and let's say the engine is not the exact same RPM, so I'm gonna go ahead and change that RPM a little bit. And now let's go to Reference Waveform. Let's go to File. Let's bring up my crank. And then let's go to File. Let's bring up my cam. And now we've got these on the screen. Now I can take my cam and I can move that or change the offset if I want to. And I can take over here the orange, which is my crank. And I can do something like this for separation purposes. And if I want to change the offset, let's come back over to my cam. And now if I need to change the delay a little bit, I can shift it over a little bit. And let's say that we just want to look at one of these signals. It's really easy to go over to view. And let's go ahead and let's say we want to do just the cam. So let's turn off channel B. Let's turn off that reference file. And now we can work directly just with this cam signal if we want to view just the one. And we can do the same thing if we just want to work with the crank signal. We can do it in this fashion. And now we can do a crank comparison. Now the actual capture in red is at a slightly different RPM speed, so they're not perfectly the same, but we can still do our waveform comparison. Here's a feature under view that I just noticed. I don't know if this is new or it's always been there, but we've got an axis layout where we can do an auto arrange, which is kind of cool. And we can also do a reset. And if I do this auto arrange, you'll notice the patterns got smaller. And that's because Pico took into account how much screen space I have. Let's go ahead and look and see what they did. Let's click on that B channel. Let's come over to display and notice right here on this scaling, it set that scaling down to 0.5, so if I move that back up to 1, then we get back to our original size. So that's kind of cool. 
Let's go back over to our view and let's turn on these other two channels and let's do auto arrange again. And now this puts everything on the screen, makes it a lot easier to do our comparison. So this is kind of cool. Now I can go ahead and take this pattern and move this a little closer if I want to. I can bring my cam signal down here if I want to. I can come over and make these a little bit closer along this way. If I want to shift this one way or another, I can simply go back over to my reference waveform. And if I'm working with the cam, I can click on my cam and I can change my delay a little bit. If I don't like it going from 20 to 30, but I want it to be like 25, I can do this and just do 25 milliseconds. And that brings these a little bit closer to alignment. I hope you found this helpful. So let's show a nice feature about loading a setup file. So I'm going to come over to open. I'm going to open up this TPS simulator file. And there's my waveform that I captured last time. If I click the stopped and make it go to run, I want you to notice something. First of all, it's going to verify your probes. So I'm going to go ahead and run with probes found. And then I want you to notice that the time trigger and other settings were all saved. So now if I want to go ahead and capture another TPS signal, it's going to go ahead and capture that. However, if I just want to reset my scope and get rid of all these settings, there is a reset configuration and that is actually found under the more menu. That's right there. I put it as a favorite. So I'm going to come over here and hit reset. I want you to notice it's going to warn you and you hit OK. It will reactivate everything. So in my case, I have to turn off my channel B. I have to come over to my channel A and go ahead and choose my 10 volts. And now I'm back in something that's not giving me all this crazy waveform stuff. I hope this has been helpful.